All right, Ben, let's try this one more time. I gotta do, I gotta do it for camera. No, dude, it hurts. <laughs> Just for, for the guys at home. You ready? Wasn't that bad? Hey guys, what's up? Magic Bard here with a pretty interesting tutorial. I would say it's more advanced and it kind of goes off of our big head effect tutorial. So if you haven't seen the big head tutorial from last week, definitely check that out. It will make things a lot easier while going through this tutorial for today. Where I got this idea was from the original Men in Black with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones where the scene that they go in and kind of interrogate Jeebs and he gets his head blown off but then it grows back so originally I was going to do this tutorial as just a a way to blow off my friend's head Ben as you see right here but I guess it'd be nice to have his head grow back so we're gonna go through the whole process in this one and what I'm going to do is not really go through a step-by-step -step of you know a click by click way of showing you how I did this I'm gonna show you the layers how I layered them and uh, just so we can kind of go through this in a faster pace so hopefully I explain everything you need to do you guys get it and create something cool out of it so here's my comp right here and I'll reveal the layers as we go through them but um, first things first, when you shoot this, okay, what you're going to do is, you know, set your subject up in the room or wherever he or she is. And how I did this was I had the camera on a tripod and I was carrying the tripod around. I sat the tripod down about here and then just left it there for the duration of the whole uh, video, okay? And then I shot two pieces. So I shot the uh, body clip, as I call it, and then I shot another one called the head, which was, I just told Ben to uh, stay in place, try to stay as still as possible, and then move your head around as if it's growing out of your body. And you can see him doing all the weird, funny faces there. So this is what we're gonna do. Drag your body comp and your head comp into um, or your body and head clips into a new composition so you can just uh, select it and drag it into the uh, new composition button right there right here we have our uh, body comp that I shot and then we're going to have our head comp which is right here and I'll show you that in a second now for step two what you're going to do is track the body comp and you're going to go into your tracker controls okay and you're going to track motion and try to track something closest to your actors or actresses neck as possible and I'm talking about center neck area so anywhere around here will be a lot easier than say if I tracked uh, a logo um, which is further away from the neck so it wouldn't really work out as well so yeah, track anywhere as close to the neck as possible. What you're going to do is apply that, that tracking data to a null object. So you're going to layer new null object and then you'll go to your um, edit target and make sure that you apply the tracking data to that null object and then duplicate that null. So you're gonna have two nulls with the same tracking data on it. And then you're going to take that tracking data and take your growing head comp or your growing head clip actually it'll be and you're going to pre-compose those two okay so you're gonna pre-compose the null and your head composition okay and now let's kind of jump into that and see what that looks like so you're gonna have a head comp and you'll have your null there okay and what you're gonna do is parent the head comp to your null and remember you just pre-composed one of the nulls so the other null should be back in your other composition so pre go into your uh, pick whip and parent it to your null object okay step number four which is rotoscoping our head out okay and that's how I got to here so I went into our roto brush tool up here and I painted over his head 
okay, and basically just uh, masked out his head from the body. So you're going to go all the way down to the neck and so it's going to look like this, right? A head with a neck, which is good. So we're good to go there. Now, for, for the next part, I want you to add a liquefy effect to the head, okay? And you can see kind of what I did here with the keyframing. So go into your effects and presets, type in liquefy and just add that to your head comp. Head comp. Um, head clip right there and what you're going to do is you're going to use this pinch or uh, smudging tool to stretch out his neck and make sure it fits in the body and that's why you'll see this body comp right here okay now this body comp it, it it's not gonna be in your pre comp um, that you guys just created this is just a body clip from the last composition so um, it's this layer it's this clip and I just brought it in here to show you guys exactly why we're doing the liquefy effect so you don't need this in your pre comp that we're working in right now I'm just do I just have it in here to show you guys exactly what we're doing so the whole reason we do the liquefy as you can see I stretched out his neck and keyframed it to make sure that you know as he's moving around when he was acting um, his head's going you know left and right and so I had to stretch out his neck to make sure it always fit inside of this uh, body comp okay so that there are no like black holes um, around here so that's the whole point of that so you're going to use the liquify tool and using using this smudge tool just kinda keyframe it out and smudge out his neck so that it's always fitting the body comp alright and that's kind of the motion that you're gonna be doing and remember you you help you already have this parented to our uh, null neck track right so let's get into it step number five let's go back to our full comp okay our head explosion composition and we're going to add another liquefy effect to the head okay and what you're going to do with this liquefy effect is kind of squish his head down to a stump so let me open up the keyframes and show you how what I did there the first keyframe you're going to add is make sure you're gonna and, and you're doing this on the the other this composition as well and so the first keyframe you're gonna add is gonna be your distortion mesh you're gonna keyframe this parameter start at the very end where his head is fully grown and then you could drag it all the way down to the very start and you're going to use the smudge tool again and just smudge his head all the way down to a stump um, don't mess with his neck we don't want to do that just his head so smash his head down there all in and that's at the very beginning of your frame so you can see I left some space right here so this is about one two three four five six seven eight frames long okay and then um, you're gonna wanna leave this little eight frame space right here for later when we add all of our blood and and explo head explosion stuff so add a little you know eight frame space and then start your beginning of the stump of his head there as it grew I smashed his head a little more because the distortion mesh effect um, happens really quickly so you'll see and you'll just kind of play around with it whatever looks good to you um, you know keyframe your uh, smudging as it goes until it looks like somewhat real <laughs> so for step number six we're going to add a background wall now when I shot this I forgot to shoot a plate as they call it um, so what I did was I had to use a piece of the wall over here and uh, just kind of add it over in right behind uh, my actor so you're gonna have to you know if you shoot if you shoot a plate you don't have to worry about this so here we go so we have our body comp okay and we have our head now um, here's our wall and part of step six is t 
taking your body comp, okay, that we also, remember this is the same clip as this one, this body one and this body one, and you're going to cut out his head, okay? Now let me just solo that to show you. So all this really is, is just a cut out of, of his head. Don't worry about any of this extra stuff I have going on. This is again because I didn't shoot a plate, so I had to do some extra masking as you can see. So make sure you go to your body comp and cut out his head and then what we're going to do is check it out with our added wall or as you guys have it a uh, plate behind there and, and make sure that kind of animation uh, works for you so the smudging that you guys did and uh, you know if there's little black spaces that you don't like um, we'll use this time right now to finesse it and make it kind of fit in there and you know it looks it looks good enough for me now what we're also going to want to do is add some shirt fabric to the back okay so that we don't have this empty space back here let's see if we can see that yeah so we want to add some shirt fabric to the back of that so what we're going to do is duplicate our body layer what you can do is just use pieces of his uh, shirt and then just add it to the back okay and what that'll look like is kind of like this so I have two layers of his fabric I have a bit a darker layer which is going to be the bottom of his shirt so I created a couple of masks um, faded them out feathered him and um, added this curve that made his shirt darker down here as opposed to a little bit brighter up here so I added this shirt fabric to the composition so let me just solo these to show you what they are it's literally just his shirt with some curves to it to make it darker because it's going to be the uh, back of his shirt and then what I did was parented both of them to our null object which is the uh, the neck track that we did right so that it's moving along with his neck. And then I also keyframed the fabric um, so that it's always fitting, fitting into his neck, as you can see. So remember, this is all about, this effect is really all about uh, finessing, and that's what the keyframing will do. So the null object will essentially attach it to the body, and then you have to double check to make sure there aren't any uh, missing holes and then uh, keyframe the mask and then if you see this uh, time wrap remap right here I just it's a it's a it's one frame so that's what it really is I go into time and freeze frame so that this this is just literally fabric okay it's not a it's not a moving uh, video so guys once you've created your fabric in the back you have your head smushed in now let's get into the fun stuff and add a muzzle flash to our gun so this is just a muzzle flash that I got from action movie essentials it's a video copilot.net um, stock footage which is really awesome so check that out action movie essentials which has a bunch of stuff we use in this tutorial um, and the muzzle flash is one of them so and then I add a adjustment layer up here which is just a, some brightness onto him. So, you know, when a gun goes off, there's going to be a quick one to two second um, or one to two frame flash that happens, and we want to add that to our subject. So, what I did was added a adjustment layer, turned up the curves, turned up the brightness, and then added a mask on where I want that brightness to happen. So basically on his uh, his left side our right is where it's all happening and then it's it's a little um, two frame effect so the brightness starts I keyframed it all and then in two frames the brightness goes away so I just turn down the opacity in two frames to let it kind of fade out step number nine now we're gonna explode this head okay we're gonna rip it apart so what we're going to do is you're going to create um, you're going to duplicate this head, la head layer a couple of times and then cut it into chunks and then that's what you'll see right here so 
let's open up chunk number one and go to the frame where where it blows up so there's going to be the muzzle flash two frames and then just start to blow this guy's head open so we have chunk number one which is just his head and then I masked out let's see if we can zoom in here and take a little look at these chunks so I just masked out his head and added a flesh image you know these uh, flesh images you can get offline just search stock for uh, meat <laughs> essentially that's what it is and um, you know I, I cut out a jagged edge on the meat and then parented that to my head object did the exact same thing on the other side boom boom so we have a head and then we just split it open with two frames so you know I keyframe the split parented the flesh to the head and split it open and that's it right just keep keeping this one simple okay on step number 10 is when we're going to add the blood now the blood is also something I got from uh, action movie essentials from videocopilot.net some great great uh, stock footage and action stuff you guys will want to have when it comes to creating little action scenes like this um, head explosions <laughs> of course so let's add some blood um, that's going to be right here and you can just and this is really up to you this is a stylistic choice how much blood you want to add obviously you don't want to do too much or you don't want to do too little as well so added a couple of couple of bursts right here just kind of exploding up as the head explodes away and then I also added some uh, splatters over here as it kind of like shoots against the wall because our bullet is coming this way um, from right to left so our blood's gonna be coming uh, right to left as well hitting, hitting onto the wall and splatting there and uh, making it nice and gory and graphic because that's what we like and then for step 11 we'll add some more blood and some blood bursts blood mist um, you can also check out actionvfx.com I got some serious blood mist from that which looks really good as well um, let's see if I could show you where that is that's like right in this kind of general area um, right here so you can see it it, it just it, it layering this blood helps kind of add to the realism of what's kind of going on here you know of course this is fake but um, the the more you layer stuff the easier it will be in terms of making it look somewhat we real <laughs> or real enough to kind of fake your friends out or get them all excited to uh, make movies now step number 12 we're going to add some more layers and this one will be smoke because when you blow a head off it's gonna be nice and hot so we need some smoke to be coming out of that uh, little little neck that he has right here so I added some smoke as you can see I think I even color corrected one of the smoke layers this is also action movie essentials um, and added a, a red fill to add to the hotness that is our whole composition right here and let's kind of uh, finesse and add add some more to it so now what I want you to do is pre-compose this whole thing so one way you can do that is by selecting all of the layers and going into layer pre-compose or you can just take your composition click hold and drag it into a new comp so let's do that and you'll end up with one of these without the without the null object of course um, so you'll have your head explosion and what I want you to do is press P and you're going to alt click on this stopwatch and you're gonna add a wiggle effect okay and let me show you what that looks like so you're gonna type in wiggle parentheses and then you're going to add a couple of slider controls okay so go over here to effects and presets type in slider and drag two of these slider controls into your head composition okay 
and name one of them slider pixels, name the other slider per second, or you can just add per second and pixels, or name them per second and pixels. And then what you're gonna do in your wiggle effect, go into is type in wiggle, parentheses, and use the pick whip right here, drag it up to your slider per second, and let go. And then you're gonna add a comma, take the pick whip again, add it to your slider pixels, and let go. And then add a last parentheses right here. And what that does is it enables you to keyframe your wiggle effect. And why we wanna do that is because it adds a sort of handheld looking effect to our uh, composition and it doesn't look like and it, it, it'll help it not look like it's on a tripod right so now we have the wiggle effect which is good and you're gonna go into your composition and comp settings and just make sure everything's 1920 by 1080 and you'll be good um, I shot this on a Sony a7s 2 4k camera so I scaled everything down and made it fit into our 1920 by 1080 frame. And then the last step would be adding the null layer and then parent your composition to the null layer and then you're gonna use the null to move stuff around. So you can use the null as a zooming effect so I just scaled in to do that and then as I scale in um, I add a little camera lens blur to my composition um, just to sort of you know add to the realism and um, yeah guys you can use use this null to move this guy around since he's kind of on a since your position is taken up by the wiggle effect I use the null to add some more movement of the camera so it looks like it's really handheld right and um, guys that's essentially it. This dark gray solid is just a vignette that I added just for fun. And guys, that's your head explosion effect that grows back into a person like Jeebs from Men in Black 2. I hope this helped. Let me know how you did. Post your videos on Instagram and tag me at Magic Bard. I love to see your work and what you guys come up with. It's always cool to see the different ideas that other visual effects artists come up with with different effects. And um, if this tutorial helped in any way, please like it, subscribe to the channel. I'll have more advanced AE tutorials coming out this week for you guys to learn and hopefully help turn you into epic uh, visual effects artists. So I'm Magic Bard. You can find me on social at Magic Bard. And that's it, guys. I'll see you on the next one.